Today on Burke Make Stuff, we're gonna be replacing the old mailbox and post from out in front of the house. Now, not only am I going to show you the easiest way to do this, but I'm also going to show you the fastest way to do this. And by putting those two together, it's a win-win. <laughs> The first thing to know is that a mailbox is not just a mailbox. There's actually three pieces to it. There's the mailbox, the post mount, which mounts the mailbox to the post, and the post itself. After doing a week's worth of research and ordering everything from online, it wasn't until all the boxes actually got to my house that I realized I ordered everything from the same company, a company called Architectural Mailboxes. Now they're not sponsoring this video in any way, but the link to their stuff on Amazon is below if you want to check it out. But you don't have to take my word for it. The first step of this project is to ignore the instructions. Now is the best time to put the mounting plate on the post, while the post is not cemented into the ground so you can still move it around and do what you gotta do to get those bolts in place. Now that that's done, we're gonna take our parts outside and to them add the rest of the tools we're going to need for the job. That includes a post hole digger, and don't worry if you only have a shovel, that will work absolutely perfectly. One bag of fast setting cement. I know I have two here, you're only gonna need one. And of course, the hose to add water to the cement. Other than that, bring a wrench with you and that'll be all you need for this entire project. Yep. Wrench. Identify exactly where you want your new mailbox and post to live, and then start digging. I am the dwarf and I'm digging a hole. Ideally, you want your hole to be one third the depth of the length of your post. So if your post is 51 inches like mine, you're gonna dig down 17 inches for support. You also want it to be three times as wide as your post. My post is just over three inches thick, so I'm gonna dig my hole about 10 inches wide. A great trick for this is to bring either your shovel or your post hole digger into your shop, measure out that distance and mark it with a piece of tape. That way when that piece of tape is level with the ground, you're done digging. Next up, we're gonna dump between four and six inches of the dry concrete mix into the bottom of our hole. Hey, Burke, let me, uh, let me tell you something. Uh, I knew he'd have uh, something to say about this. I'd like you to meet my favorite naysayer, Stan. Hi, neighbor. You're lucky I overheard what you were saying about pouring dry concrete. You can't do that. It just doesn't work. The water won't make it to the middle of the mix, so the outside of it's gonna get totally hot, and the inside, it's gonna be dry as a bone. Dry as a bone, you see what I did there? Yes, Dan, I, I hear what you're saying, but dry pouring does work. It's been proven like a thousand times on YouTube. Did you, uh, you actually do any research about this, or you just... Well, uh... No, I, I didn't do any research or anything. Maybe you should go learn a little bit about something before you offer opinions on it? No, you're, uh, you're right, I, I'll go do that. All right, buddy, I'll see you at the barbecue this week, yeah? Oh yeah, I gotta uh, get some meat on these bones. Buddy. <laughs> so you're gonna put between four and six inches of the dry concrete mix down in the bottom of this hole. Cement dust is really bad, don't breathe it in. You're then gonna wet that concrete mix. How much? It doesn't really matter. It's gonna take in all the water it needs, especially being underground. And then you're going to put the pole in place and surround that pole with the rest of the dry concrete mix. Now, if you're one of those people who likes to use a level, this would be a perfect time to put a level on this pole. But as Jimmy DeResta always says, if it looks level, it is level. So there's really no need for that. Next up, we're going to saturate that concrete as much as you can. It's gonna take in, again, what it needs and push off what it doesn't need. We're gonna give it some time, and while that is getting all squigglified, yes, that's a technical term, we're gonna put the mailbox on top of the pole. One, two, three, four, four. I want to address three things that I know are going to come up in the comments below, and this should help you quite a bit. I used a metal pole. If you wanna use a wooden pole, please feel free. But if put in perfectly, a metal pole and a wood pole, the metal pole will outlast the wood pole every single time. Number two, I know it's already been discussed in the video, but dry pouring concrete. This is the perfect application for dry pouring concrete because the mailbox bears no weight. It's just a mailbox that's going to hold some packages and some mail, so it's perfect. I have no issue with it. If you do, please tell me about it in the comments. And number three, I know it seemed like this whole project was completely wrapped up and done, but my wife took one look at the mailbox and said, 
it needs a Snoopy. And she's absolutely right. So I've been scouring the internet for days and I found a to scale Snoopy. Now this is gonna go on the mailbox. If you wanna check pictures of that out, it'll be up on my Instagram, it's Burke Makes Stuff. And now for those final sexy finished project shots. Let's go. Now, there's nothing sexy about that, it's a mailbox. I mean, it's beautiful, it's a very sturdy mailbox, but it's a, it's a mailbox. Mm -hmm.